Angela Merkel fought valiantly for her Chinese friends, but now she is left with no power. China is losing its last hope in the European Union as the German Chancellor Angela Merkel nears retirement. Merkel is the only real friend of China within the EU. Over the past 15 years, she has visited China 12 times in a bid to assert that Beijing isn't a systemic rival. Merkel, the de facto EU leader, has fought hard to mute any response against Chinese human rights violations and the Middle Kingdom's extraterritorial claims that threaten world peace. But now, things are changing as Merkel isn't the tall personality that she used to be. In fact, she is in the twilight of her career and will no longer remain the Chancellor after the German federal elections next year. Consequently, she is left with no real power to help China. Merkel had her own interests in aiding China, namely her personal dislike for the US President Donald Trump, her great power ambitions and Berlin's deep trading ties with Beijing. However, those who are supposed to lead a post-Merkel Germany do not have to share Merkel's diabolical vision of EU's China relationship. They are not bound to put EU-China trade ties above the tensions caused by Chinese human rights violations and expansionism. In fact, Neither most of Merkel's potential successors nor her ally, the Social Democratic Party, seem to share the German Chancellor's enthusiasm when it comes to the prospect of Berlin's pro-China policy. Now that Merkel is set to retire from active German politics next year, these potential successors and allies are drafting a tough China policy. Merkel as such doesn't seem to be dictating her country's China stand any longer. Merkel has three potential successes from within her party, the Christian Democratic Union, Norbert Rottingen, Armin Laschet and Frederick Merz. And except Laschet, the potential successes aren't really fond of Merkel's soft China policy. Rottingen, head of the Bundestag's Foreign Affairs Committee, is seen as one of the leading China hawks in the German legislature. He even led an intense campaign to get the Chinese telecom major Huawei banished from involvement in Germany's 5G network over security concerns. Rattigan is also critical of Merkel's failure to bring up issues like the imposition of the draconian national security law in Hong Kong by the Chinese Communist Party. He said what the German government said about Hong Kong was the absolute minimum and it just wasn't enough. Similarly, if another Merkel rival within the CDU, Frederick Merz, comes to power, Berlin is expected to take a much stronger line against Beijing than the Merkel administration. As such, Merz is considered a strong rival of Angela Merkel within the CDU and Rottigan even more so, having led a rebellion against the incumbent German Chancellor. In fact, fundamental change in German policy towards China is being predicted once Merkel is replaced. Politico quoted a Bundestag official as saying, Once Merkel is gone, I think you will see quick shift, possibly a drastic one. And we can already see hints of changing political atmosphere with the German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas, an SPD leader, toughening his China policy. Maas is guided by his own interests in pursuing an anti-China policy, despite being a part of the Merkel administration. Over the past few months, his ministry has given subtle and sometimes not so subtle signals of marginalizing China. Earlier this year, a senior SPD-led foreign ministry official had published an angry commentary against China in the German Der Spiegel magazine that seemed to denounce Angela Merkel. Recently, the German foreign ministry even released an India-centric Indo-Pacific strategy that also made indirect references to Beijing's increasing belligerent behavior. Heiko Maas has himself taken some bold steps like rebuking his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi. And now, a Taiwanese military delegation is reportedly preparing for a Germany visit next year. Maas is therefore paving the path for a tough China policy. The German foreign minister is guided by his own party's tough stance against China. SPD, a junior coalition partner of Merkel's CDU, has time and again criticized China and Merkel's pro-China policy. Niels Schmidt, foreign policy spokesman of the Social Democratic Party, said Merkel's China policy is behind the times. He added, she still sticks to this idea of convergence that as we deepen our economic ties with China, it will become more liberal and Western-oriented, but that's just out of date.
Germany's Europe minister Michael Roth, another SPD leader, keeps calling China a systemic rival of Europe while urging the EU to resist Beijing's divide and rule tactics. Therefore, as is common with coalition governments, Maas isn't really following Merkel's line and is pursuing his own party's stand when it comes to his China policy. What also encourages the German foreign minister's urge of following a hawkish China policy is the prospect of a coalition between the centre-left SPD and the Greens party, while the CDU is poised to emerge as the single largest party in 2021, the Greens and SPD are not ruling out an alliance that could bring them in power. The Greens party remains the fiercest critic of China's Uyghur concentration camps in Xinjiang and the security risks posed by China's surveillance industry. Merkel today isn't really the compelling power that she used to be. Her potential successors aren't very keen to inherit her China-friendly policy and her administration's foreign minister is increasingly following his party's perception in formulating German interactions with Beijing. Merkel fought hard for her Chinese friends, but now things have gone out of her hands.